petroleum. For industry, the nation's automobiles, diesels, and jetliners. Since the first internal combustion engine sputtered its way onto the national scene, the demand for fuel has been unending, and the search for these precious liquids relentless to the very top of the world, oil at Crudo Bay, Alaska. In 1969, several major oil companies formed a consortium, now incorporated as the Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The objective? Build a 48-inch pipeline from the shores of the Arctic Ocean to the Port of Valdez, 800 miles to the south. The largest privately funded construction effort ever undertaken. To meet this difficult and urgent challenge, Alaska marshaled a specialized team of professionals representing all facets of engineering, environment, and economic knowledge. Michael Baker, Jr. Incorporated, consulting engineers of Beaver, Pennsylvania, and Jackson, Mississippi, is proud to be a part of this most unique endeavor. The pipeline starts in the oil fields of Prudhoe Bay, winds its way south over some of the world's most arduous terrain, crosses three mountain ranges, 64 major rivers and streams, 800 crossings in all, costs in excess of $7 billion, with ultimate design capacity delivering 2 million barrels each day to the terminal at Valdez. But to tell the story properly, one must reflect for a moment on the past. With the nation still binding the wounds of the great civil war, Secretary of State William Henry Seward, on October 18th, 1867, purchased Alaska from Russia for $7,200,000 after 126 years of czarist rule. 1896, gold in the Klondike. The Yukon and sourdoughs record their niche in history. 1941, World War II. Strategic bases are located and the territory becomes the nation's defense in the great Northwest. Military sites that have also played a key role in the economic stability of that vast country. Alaska statehood, 1959. The territory of 586,000 square miles becomes the 49th state. February 18th, 1968. Oil discovered at Prudhoe Bay. April 29, 1974, construction of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline gets underway as work is started on the 360-mile road which closely parallels the pipeline route between the Yukon River and the North Slope oil wells. At the outset of the project, no such road to the north existed. The Winter Highway, or Snow Road, built in the winter of 1968, quickly disappeared during the spring thaw, being of no use in the summer. To build an all-weather road, then, was of top priority. Baker engineers and surveyors chartered the way for this pioneer road over Arctic Alaska. The route crosses the Arctic coastal plains, rises 4,800 feet through the Brooks Range and over the interior plateaus. During the four years awaiting necessary right-of-way permits, Baker engineers and technicians assisted Alyeska in formulation and finalizing pre-construction details with governmental regulatory agencies. It was a time for pre-construction planning, expanding technology, developing design criteria, and perfecting Arctic expertise. Problems were identified and solved. After the spring thaw, no service transportation existed, and Alyeska recognized the need to sustain logistical support it was determined that the most practical means of supply, prior to road construction, would necessitate extensive use of the airplane. In January of 1970, the first project personnel were dispatched to remote areas north of the Yukon River. 
Field engineers and surveyors were mobilized to obtain field data necessary for design of bridges, landing strips, camps, and the 360-mile Yukon River to Prudhoe Bay all-weather road. Based on this information, seven landing strips were strategically located at construction camps. Immediately, the entire area to the north slope is open to air traffic. Diesel fuel, heavy equipment, and spare parts are stockpiled. Until the spring of 1974, a critical period for the Alaska team, and one of timely accomplishment. Under a strict time schedule due to the approaching breakup, the mandate is met. Eleven airfields are established, and air traffic is sustained. The airstrips range from the type at Chandelier with a 3,000-foot runway to Galbraith's 5,000 feet, all designed to meet FAA and state criteria. Upon completion of the airfields, a steady stream of Hercules cargo transports provide, for the first time, summer support. The design of the 360-mile road and all bridges for river and stream crossings north of the Yukon River required extensive research because native soils varied greatly. From high moisture silt that offers no firm support in a thawed state, to thaw-stable gravel and rock, and the phenomenon of permafrost, subsurface soils that remain frozen year-round. Geologists drilled hundreds of boreholes and took thousands of soil samples to determine the safest, most secure way. On stable soil, the road gravel base is three feet thick. On less stable sites, that mat is five to six feet deep. 3,400 workers, meeting the challenge imposed by Alaska's hostile weather conditions, moved more than 30 million yards of gravel and fill. With crews working around the clock, work substantially completed in 154 days, causing no disturbance outside the building area. A rugged wilderness transformed into a well-traveled highway. This road, to be turned over to the state and the existing highway system south of the Yukon, gives mobile access the length of the pipeline corridor. During the period of early activity, engineers and survey crews worked out of existing lodges and temporary shelters. Construction workers were later housed in a series of 30 work camps along the pipeline route. This is Galbraith. Special prefabricated Arctic units with rooms for workers, as well as recreation, commissary, and dining facilities in each location. Camp accommodations for both men and women, with such exotic names as Prospect Creek, Coldfoot, and Old Man, with camp populations as varied as their names, from 300 at Chandelier and Adigan to 1,600 at Fairbanks and Franklin Bluff. The point of access to the North Slope was selected just over 100 miles above Fairbanks, a 2,000-foot crossing of the legendary Yukon River. Work began on the combination vehicular pipeline support bridge in the spring of 1974 to be the first permanent structure to span the Yukon in Alaska. Beginning in 1969, during the sub-zero winter, an ice bridge was constructed across the frozen Yukon, capable of supporting even the heaviest traffic. These cold weather crossings effectively served the supply system. Thousands of tons of equipment were moved over the Yukon during their six winters of operation. In the spring, the ice bridge melted away and the air cushion vehicle with a 130 ton capacity was the means of conveyance. This strange looking barge transported material through the summer of 1975. In October of that year, the new 24 and one half million dollar Yukon Bridge was open to year-round pipeline traffic. 